Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. It is developer day here at the Data Cloud Summit, but on theCUBE, it might as well be founder day. We're having a lot of really cool tech founders. Founders and partners, you know, and I've done many shows, and we've observed ecosystems evolving. It's such an important part of a, of a platform strategy. Yeah, no, it's really exciting. So with that, I'd like to introduce our next two guests. We have Prasanna Krishnan, Head of Collaboration and Horizon at Snowflake. Welcome back She's to theCUBE. Exactly. Right. Thank Welcome. you for having me back. <laughs> and George Frazier, CEO and co-founder of Fivetran. Welcome, George. Very nice to be with you. Good so, to be back. So we, yeah, exactly. We just had, and we just had your co-founder on the show earlier, but I'd love to hear from your perspective a little bit, tell us a little bit about Fivetran and, and the sort of the massive problem that, that the companies and businesses face when they're trying to harness the power of their data. Yeah, so Fivetran is a data pipeline. Uh, we solve a very straightforward problem, which is replicating all of the data uh, from all of your systems of record, systems like SAP, Workday, Oracle, Salesforce, you name it, into your data warehouse. And we've been working with Snowflake for many years, uh, since we were both much smaller companies. Um, at this point, almost a third of Snowflake customers use Fivetran to ingest some or all of their data into Snowflake. People love Fivetran uh, because it just works. Uh, same reason they love Snowflake. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your role. Tell us about your sorry. role. Oh my, so uh, I, I'm on the product management team at Snowflake and um, my, my role sort of spans data sharing, the marketplace, native applications, um, you know, uh, working with partners like Fivetran um, as well as Horizon. So we just had one of your customers on, Lyra, and he told us, we're all on an iceberg. <laughs> okay, how are you going to govern that? What's, the, what's your strategy? He said, we're figuring that out. So let's help us understand Snowflake's approach. We've been talking about it all week and where Fivetran fits, so maybe I could, could set it up. You open source Polaris, which is the technical metadata catalog, yes. and Horizon is the Snowflake's, uh, all the, uh, the role-based access controls and all the heavy governance is yeah. your product, yeah. right? Um, that's not open source. Uh, and so you're leaning into Iceberg, let the customers put the data where they want, that's what they're going to do. Pick it up from there. What, what can you tell us about your strategy and then George, you're going to tell us where Fivetran fits. Absolutely. So you know, we want to give our customers a choice, right? We want them to be able to use um, Iceberg as an open table format, and we've always supported Iceberg, and I think Polaris takes that support a step further, um, being the Iceberg technical catalog that is fully open source. Now the way Polaris fits in with Horizon is that Horizon is you know, the sort of the built-in discovery and governance um, layer. Um, it provides you a lot of the, the, the business and semantic um, cataloging side of things, and, and so, uh, Horizon works with Polaris, um, and so you can use Horizon's discovery and governance capabilities on top of both data that is natively uh, in Snowflake's format as well as data that is in Iceberg. Um, and, and so for data that is natively in, in Snowflake's format, Snowflake is also the technical catalog, and for data that is in Iceberg, uh, Polaris is our open source um, you know, uh, Iceberg catalog, which gives our customers the ability to have their data in one place and have multiple engines be able to read and write to it. And George, where you fit is customer says, I, I want my data in Iceberg, help me get Absolutely. it there, right? You know, the announcements about Iceberg uh, have been great this year. Uh, I have nothing but praise for Snowflake's embrace of Iceberg. It really represents doing right by the customer and giving them the freedom to store their data where they want, how they want, uh, even if that means less lock-in for Snowflake. Snowflake has embraced it. Uh, I was a little surprised by this. I asked uh, Snowflake's former CEO, Frank, last year. I'm like, hey, aren't you worried about less lock-in? He's like, you just, you got to follow what the customer wants. Uh, you you got to do, you got to do it their way. Um, and so it's great to see. Uh, we have several hundred customers that uh, use Fivetran to deliver data to Iceberg today. Uh, and if you want to read that data in Snowflake, you have to go through the Glue Metastore right now, uh, which it's not important exactly what that is, but we're looking forward to the release of Polaris and embracing Polaris as the mechanism to give uh, Snowflake customers access to Iceberg data delivered by Fivetran. So I would say the word I would use for myself is I was perplexed. Uh, maybe not surprised, but perplexed in my per perplexion, not even a word, was I said, okay, but then how is Snowflake going to preserve its value add? And the answer I'm realizing 
is a combination of Horizon, but also we're going to compete on the basis of our compute engine. Yes. We've got the best one in the world, at least you believe that, and I think it's one of the best, if not the best. So we're going to compete with our strength. Yes, absolutely. And let the customers decide. So. And, and the, the compute engine has always been Snowflake's biggest strength. Right. Uh, Thierry, Benoit, and Marcin spent two years in that apartment in San Mateo uh, building it. Uh, it. It was great uh, when it came out. It's only gotten better since then, and so I think Snowflake will compete very effectively on that dimension. Well, and as we said earlier, when Benoit was on stage, he described what I called the hard plumbing, it's all in place now, and what you're doing is building on top of that, bringing in AI, bringing in an application development ecosystem. That's, that's the key to, to, a, to a platform. Yes. Okay, so tie that in to your partnership with, with Fivetran. Yeah. How are you guys working together to add incremental customer value over time? Yeah, absolutely. So as Benwa also mentioned in his keynote, data is at the center and customers' enterprise data um, you know, sits in a variety of places. Uh, not all of it originates in Snowflake, right? They have their enterprise applications and, and, and so we and Fivetran are aligned on our vision of enabling you to break down silos between data, bringing together all your data. Um, and this is where we partner with Fivetran to help bring that data into Snowflake so that it's now available for you to be able to unlock value from through AI and apps. Um, and so now where we are going with this partnership is you know, furthering that um, to, to enable customers to leverage Fivetran um, as a native application uh, on Snowflake, uh, which gives them further governance um, benefits. Um, yeah, we're very excited to make this announcement this week that Fivetran will be available as a native application in, in the Snowflake marketplace. The reason this is so important is uh, many Snowflake customers uh, spend a lot of time validating Snowflake as an environment where it's safe to put their data. Sometimes years doing that validation. Snowflake, for them, it functions like their fourth cloud. And uh, after they've done all that work, it is helpful if we can deploy uh, the parts of Fivetran that move the data into that security perimeter so that they don't have to repeat the entire process again for Fivetran. Over the last year, we've built this capability to execute in hybrid mode where you can have the same easy to use experience at Fivetran.com, but the parts that move the data all run on your own infrastructure or now on Snowflake infrastructure. I, so I've called it a super cloud. That was kind of my- You have my, indeed. Uh, but you can also monetize uh, uh, as well in the marketplace, right? That's- That, that is correct. And Customers, so Snowflake's the icebreaker, and then, please, describe that. Yeah, that's correct. Customers will be able to use uh, Snowflake credits uh, to pay for data movement into Snowflake uh, through the marketplace, running in Snowflake container services. Yeah. So talk a little bit more about the value that the customers will actually derive from this partnership in terms of not having to validate all over again, as you said, but also just what, they, what they'll get out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think this goes back to sort of the three hurdles that you run into typically when you're trying to use uh, an application in your enterprise. The first is security uh, approvals and, and being confident in the security and governance. Um, second is procurement, right? Um, and then the third is of course legal. And we are really eliminating all three of those hurdles um, with native applications. And what nat native applications do is really enable you to bring the application um, to the data, to the, uh, to the customer's uh, security and governance perimeter. And so with this partnership, um, as George was saying, we're enabling customers to run Fivetran's logic as a native application within the security and governance perimeter of their Snowflake account, which enables them um, to A, speed up procurement, um, and, and then from a monetization or from a paying for this perspective, we are also simplifying that by giving them the option to use the capacity dollars that they've already committed with Snowflake to be able to pay um, for, for the application. Can you, can you add some color to that, Prasanna, and George as well, because native, we hear that term a lot, you know, cloud native, and we're hearing AI native, na native apps. I, re I remember when people like lifted and shifted their stack into the cloud, and you know, they wrap it in a container. And you really, they weren't taking advantage of some of the native capabilities of cloud. So that's when cloud native came out. Everybody started to talk about that and the additional value that you bring. We're now hearing that with AI. What, is, what does native apps mean for the customer in terms of 
the experience? Are there capabilities native inside of Snowflake that Fivetran can take advantage of and other partners? And, and, and what are some of those examples? Yeah. So when we say native application, you know, we're really referring to applications that are built using our native app framework to leverage Snowflake's capabilities, including our um, governance and role-based access controls and the ability to um, operate um, and, and run this app within, um, within the customer's Snowflake account, right? And so uh, what this means is that, uh, you know, when I install a native application, it's much like installing an app on my phone, I can permission it and I can say what can this do in my account. Just like on my phone, I can say should this app be able to use my camera or not. And so I can say what tables can this write into, can it you know, run tasks, uh, and then I can monitor it. So the capabilities that are available to the application are all of Snowflake's um, capabilities, right? From you know, creating tables to running tasks to um, deploying an entire container now using Snowpark Container Services. So it's the experience for the customer, if I, if I understand it correctly. How is that different than sort of pre versus post? Yeah, at the end of the day, from a customer perspective, it's all about ease of use. It's all about breaking down barriers to getting all of your data together, whether those barriers are, like Prasanna said, uh, security or procurement uh, or networking. Um, this is going to be a tool that customers will be able to use to make it easy uh, to say yes to, I'm going to get my data into Snowflake in this way with Fivetran through the native application. So I want to ask about the partnership between Fivetran and, and Snowflake because I mean, when you were first talking about it, George, you said we're a good product and we work. We're kind of like Snowflake. I mean, talk a little bit about the culture of both of your organizations and, and, and the customer-centric approach and this joint goal of, as you say, making things easier, breaking down silos. How do you two work together to collaborate to make sure that you are, in fact, producing the best possible product for customers? Yeah, I think um, the companies have very similar uh, cultures and very similar product values. We try to minimize knobs. Uh, we try to make it simple on the outside, even if that means we have to do more work behind the scenes. Uh, at Snowflake, a lot of that is about performance and optimization. At Fivetran, that's about uh, reliability. Uh, Fivetran, behind the scenes, uh, we are maniacal about troubleshooting uh, data pipelines. Data pipelines is like this, and this is an area where we're, we're maybe more different. Data pipelines is like the incidental complexity business. There are so many weird things that all these different data sources do. You just, you cannot believe it. Uh, and the real value uh, Fivetran provides is all the people working madly behind the scenes to map out and uh, work around all these funny things that all these data sources do so that you just get a mirror image of your data in Snowflake as though it was born there. The good news is that because we have 7,000 customers, uh, there is a certain economy of scale. Uh, everyone ultimately has the same, the same bugs, and so uh, the longer we're around and the more customers we have, uh, the, the easier it is to make it work. And we've been around for 10 years now, uh, so we're getting pretty good at it. I love this no notion of minimizing knobs, because there's there are a lot of knob turners, but a lot of times you know, developers want to turn knobs, but we, I feel like we're entering the era where customers don't want to turn knobs anymore. I've had this conversation with Andy Jassy before, you know, years ago, when he said, look, we choose to give primitives because it gives us flexibility in the market when things change. Does AI change that? I mean, simplicity always works, but then at some point, you know, markets change and you've got to be able to do, get in and get to those primitives, do that hard work. That's what you guys have done. That's clearly what you guys are doing as well. Does AI change that sort of knob turning desire at all in your view? You know, I mean, I think with, it doesn't, right? With AI ultimately, I still want to be able to leverage AI and get the business value that I want out of it and be able to do that in a way that is simple and just works. Um, if I don't need to go fine tune, if I can use AI in minutes, that's a lot better. And so I think the simplicity applies to AI as well. Well, and I meant it the other way. Like AI abstracts that, that complexity and can, can be an agent to, to do some of that knob turning that people maybe like to do, but it doesn't really add a lot of value if that makes sense? You know, it's very hard to predict what the impact of AI is going to be on all of our businesses. We're sort of at the, uh, the first stage of a revolution here. It's, it's 2009 and the iPhone's been out for one year and everyone <laughs> knows mobile is going to be really important, but nobody's sure exactly how. Uh, I think we have studied for the last couple years how to use uh, the, the large language models to write connectors. Um, 
we have made progress on using them internally. When we write a new connector uh, at Vivetran, the uh, scaffold is actually written by a, a language model, um, but there always has to be a lot of developer work to go and, uh, and map out all of the very arbitrary rules that you need to get right in order to correctly replicate data. It's easy to replicate data, it's hard to correctly replicate data. So we haven't seen it turn things upside down for us yet, uh, but we certainly are focused on it and, and trying to figure out how uh, it'll change the data replication business. So I got to ask you, oh go ahead please. No, Prasanna, we're just, we're, we're at the real moment in time here, and as George said, we're at the first stage of the revolution. I'm curious to hear from your standpoint, as this, this landscape is, is changing so fast, what, what are the trends that you're seeing right now starting to bubble up that you think we're going to be talking about at next year's summit? Yeah, great question. I mean, clearly AI is not just a fad, it's here to stay, and, and the way I think of it is ultimately, you know, in every line of business, I want to go from data to insights, and from insights I want to take actions, and then actions generate more data, so you have a nice loop. And, you know, that going from data to insights took 12 steps, and AI is helping us reduce that down um, to a few steps, right? And I think that'll continue. In terms of the trends that we're seeing, uh, you know, I see this on two sides of the coin. One is with AI-powered applications, we're seeing uh, interesting needs for unstructured data, and maybe you're seeing some of that too. Um, that's growing, right, um, for, for all of the generative AI. Um, and then the other side of it is, we are also seeing new kinds of applications that this enables. Um, back to my point about applications that enable different lines of business to go from data to insights to actions, we see those kinds of applications being built and, and distributed. I, I, I think that um, what AI is going to do in this context is it's finally going to give us the ability to do something with unstructured text. We have been delivering uh, text data to Snowflake data warehouses for years. Uh, we deliver Zendesk tickets and Slack messages and uh, sales transcripts and CMSs with docs and you name it. Uh, and we deliver it as part of a larger schema that contains a lot of metadata about it, but the text is there, it's been there uh, this whole time. But it's very hard to do anything with right. text uh, with traditional computer science. And I think language models, uh, the, their most profound impact from an enterprise data perspective is they are going to give us the ability to actually wrangle and make use of that unstructured text data. Sentiment analysis is a good example. We've, see, we've seen many demos here at the show. Sentiment analysis has not been that great in my opinion. You know, and it now has the potential to actually be much greater signals and higher value. Exactly. Yes, and, and other things like that that we can't even predict right yeah. now. Right. But these language models, in, in some sense, they actually comprehend that unstructured text. And uh, what are people going to do with that? Time will tell, but they're going to do something. In, there's a lot of value in there. In amazing speed, you know, uh, not always, but, but oftentimes better than you know, humans can. I mean, certainly faster. Yeah, um, and it's multimodal, right? Not only text, yeah. but also images and, and videos and so on. Well, and two, I think as you start to be able to blend the best of, of, of multiple models, you know, you guys have done a lot of work with mixture of experts, that's sort of the first step. Right. But if I can build apps that actually can, in near real time, tap multiple models, that's going to open up a whole new layer of value. Like you said, it's very hard to predict, but you can predict one thing, it's going to blow our minds. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. I, I got to ask you. So, when Taylor was here, you, you guys have a pretty big entourage um, following you. I'm imagining, so you, you've seen Snowflake, incredibly successful company, great IPO during the pandemic. You guys have raised, I think, nearly a billion dollars. I'm imagining, George, up on the balcony at the New York Stock Exchange someday, IPO, bunch of people screaming. <laughs> I don't know if we could, let's hear it, guys. Come on, make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, but what, where do you want to take the company? Our goal is to go public. We've always thought that uh, it makes sense for there to be an independent company that solves the problem of data replication from any source to any destination, uh, and we're on that journey. Um, it's, uh, I, I can't say exactly when it will happen, but it's closer now than it's ever been. Well, we've had many of these discussions. I was just talking to Nick Schneider, who's the CEO of Arctic Wolf, S similar aspirations. He's like, you know, we're getting ready. We're just waiting to see what the window looks like, and at, when the time is right, we'll go. But we've seen from the, the data, the survey data I shared with you earlier from our partner ETR, you obviously have a lot of momentum. It's tough sometimes to tell how a private company is doing other than you know, reading effusive press releases, but we have real data that shows momentum, so congratulations on that. We're, we're growing well. Our message of simplicity is getting through. 
Great. Thank I you. think Thoreau said it first, but yes, absolutely. Simplicity, <laughs> simplicity, simplicity. Prasanna and, and, and George, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. A really fun conversation. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks, you guys. I'm Rebecca Knight. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.